head injury, possible concussion from his words. He tried to milk a goat, but it turned out to be a male goat. He tried to milk a goat, but it turned out to be a male goat. This is Georgie. Alright, welcome back to Field Hospital, Dr. Taylor's story. It is the 3rd of September here in Autumn. Now, in case this is completely brand new to you, probably means you missed the first video. So, upper right corner of the screen, will be a link for you in case you want to check that out. I wouldn't be surprised if you did miss it just because I've been reading a lot of comments recently about, you know, YouTube not notifying me of your videos, Falcon, yada, yada, yada. So, you know, it's the usual thing with YouTube. They'll let you know whenever they feel like letting you know. But I'm here every day, so keep that in mind. Now, in case you're unfamiliar with this and you haven't watched the first video yet, do so. But to give you a quick rundown, this is essentially what I call Papers, Please. Except being, uh, instead of being a border patrol of an oppressive government, you're a doctor in an oppressive government, apparently, during wartime. And you get to choose who gets treated, who does not. There's only a limited amount of beds and apparently a lot of patients. Anastasia Fomina, Private 24, female. Military attached of Slovagoria in the Independent Republic of Gard. Lost her father, a policeman, as a result of an accident when she was a child. Was with the convoy of Slavagurian Division during forced relocation within IRG territory. Injured during an aerial assault on the convoy. Lost consciousness supposedly as a result of a concussion. Right forearm has been amputated. Oof. Okay, so we also have requests. We could get more information about injuries, their background, just to see who they are. Are they worked, looking after or not, stuff like that. Victor Belov, Lance Corporal 32 Mayo. Sever Severo Gradian Pilot was a civilian passenger pilot before the war, showed himself to be a good pilot and comrade, was awarded for successfully landing a passenger plane onto a landing strip, which was previously almost destroyed by shells. Hmm, really good one, huh? Multiple injuries from a plane crash, took part in dogfighting during an air raid by the Dutchies Aviation on a Slavagorian raid. Ethan Miles, 21, Corporal Mayo, joined the army after losing a bet. A month and a half later, the war started. Shrapnel wounds from a shell that hit his tank. It's a wonder he managed to crawl out from there under the burning machine. And finally, we have this guy. I remember you from the last video. You got that very scummy look to you. A farmer from a frontline village. As luck would have it, he started his farming work shortly after the war broke out. Refused evacuation several times. Brought an injured cow with him. From his words, he didn't know where to take the poor little, poor little heifer. Heifer? Is that heifer? I don't think I've ever seen the word heifer ever used in a video game. That's the word that I'm thinking about. From the 5th Division reports, he tried to bring his... His her? To safety through a minefield. Only two cows survived. So you're fine. It's the cow that's injured. <laughs> okay. No. No, dude. I'm sorry. Let's let's look into the, the amputated one here. <laughs> I mean... Whatever her name is, Anastasia. She's not the amputated one. It's, that sounds very terrible. Condition is stable. Complaints of nausea and headache. No external damage signs or internal organ damage or concussion detected. Right forearm amputated 11 years ago and does not influence the patient's condition. Suspicions of an unknown virus infection. Recommended observation by a doctor in a hospital or a military installation. Now, this is intriguing because in the first video there was also a virus and we decided to treat the patient and he still died. Even though we observe them so it's something to keep note of so yeah, let's go ahead and uh, get you a medical examination as well moderately grave condition concussion left leg fractured signs of internal bleeding requires surgery yeah, yeah, i think he's in pretty bad shape ethan miles let's see about you moderately grave condition bleeding stopped but may restart first degree burns in the left eye and shin surgery required to extract shrapnel Obviously, if you're going by, like, you know, who should be treated, obviously him over everybody else. The only reason why I would like to treat her is curiosity. Morbid curiosity in the fact that she might have that same virus we encountered in the first day that we did this. And I want to see if that leads to anything in particular. So, Ethan, I'm sorry, dog. This is, um, I'm just curious about this. I'm very curious if this leads anywhere. Why you gotta, why you gotta show up and guilt trip me, dude? Okay, so check it out. She also died of sudden temperature increase during treatment. 
But I'm hoping that maybe by checking out these viruses every single time I get the option to, it maybe it leads to a certain type of ending about this virus, because I'm very curious about this now. It's the second one that we've um, encountered, that we have no idea what it's about. Victor, however, did survive, and he did apparently drop us a case file here. Victor Belov, 2nd Aviation Division, Slavagarian Air Force. That's about it, huh? Yeah, we get like little notes if we um, help people out. 14th of October. Good morning, Doctor. We inform you that HQ has made the decision to increase the size of the 3rd Medical Brigade's field hospital. Also, through the extension to the HQ, the amount of requests we can process per day has increased to 6. One of the patients today was injured in the fighting near Lemberg. The 6th Medical Brigade's hospital is probably out of beds if they drove him all the way here. One of the patients today was injured fighting near Lemberg, huh? Alfred Taylor had a meteoric rise in the ranks since the start of the war by continually displaying leadership qualities. However, his approach was often criticized by his subordinates. He was awarded for taking part in the liberation of Nadal. Several gunshot wounds received in combat, complaints of memory gaps. Witnesses report he led his squad's charge in the front ranks. Volunteered for the army immediately after the war started. Follows the orders of senior officers with his due diligence, however, is often seen arguing with comrades in arms. He can't stand their stupidity. What? Cranios, cranio cerebral injury. Suspected concussion as a, result, as a result of a brawl with fellow soldiers. Patient claims he wasn't the initiator of the fight. Witnesses claim otherwise. Patrick Johnson, military driver, took no part in combat. Rumor has it he got promotions thanks to a cousin in Brigade HQ. Was often called for a transport for, to transport high-ranking officers. Hmm. How about that? Nerve damage as a result of a motor accident. Was transferring a trophy automobile to the Ford Medical Brigade's location. Simon Kirk. There's very little information about the patient. Has positive recommendations from the higher-ups and many accolades. What those are for is unknown. Gunshot wound received during a reconnaissance mission in enemy territory. And finally, we have Eleanor Brown. One of the few survivors of the St. Constantine advance in the early days of the war. Took part in the defense and later the liberation of the Dow. Many other special operations as two stars of valor. Head injury, multiple bruises and abrasion as a result of an attack by an unknown assailant. Um, I'd like to know a little bit about her background. Maybe we could learn about this injury. Please provide the patient's dossier. Statement for the military prosecution from 14th of October, 1938. Complaint Eleanor Brown, captain of the 15th Brigade statement. Assault on the complaint on the complainant reported by an unknown male 15 to 40 years old. The assailant presumably is a serviceman in the armed forces of the Independent Republic of Guard, so the IRG, and has a scar on his face. Complaints sent to physical examination, the result of which serve as grounds for the potential decision to open a criminal case. Let's go ahead and get her treated. Condition stable, signs of a concussion detected, multiple bruises in the arms and upper body, indicate physical assault. Hospitalization unnecessary. Um, alright, so let's see. You... several gunshots. I would definitely say... Heavy condition. Three gunshot wounds requires hospitalization. Yeah, I figured as much. Homeboy here, gunshot wound received during reconnaissance mission. I mean, I'm gonna probably get him checked out. Condition stable. Basic information is classified. Condition stable. Yeah, this guy's up to some weird nonsense, isn't he? I really want to drop one of these on him now. Look at this! This guy is up to some weird stuff over here. I can't even get any dossier information on him. And it used up one of my requests. I'm gonna tree I'm gonna bring him in just because like I wonder if that'll lead to some interesting stuff here. So I'm gonna bring him for that. Now we got Homeboy here, the driver, and the girl that apparently not really required a hospitalization. Richard Welch. Sorry, boys. No more room. Eleanor Brown, I try to get to the bottom of your story, but I'll keep an eye out for anybody with a scar, though. Alright, treat it. Alfred Taylor, treatment prescribed to patients shows signs of improvement. We did get a little bit of a note from Simon Kirk. Patient disappeared together with his card. Doctor, thank you for your cooperation. SK Simon Kirk. And check it, he's got that little stamp right there. Yo, we're into it now, boys. Richard Walsh. Patient is recovering after blood clot detachment during treatment. Are you really that, Robert Taylor? I once stood guard with your brother at the brigade's warehouse. Great lad, even if a bit odd. Can you imagine? Or can you image? I guess that should say, can you imagine? First, he refused to take a rifle with him to the guard duty. Then, when he finally agreed, he unloaded it fully. 
walked around just like that, no bullets. I'll say hello to you next time. I'll say hello from you next time I see him. Patrick Johnson died of alcohol poisoning. Eleanor Brown was patient released from hospital. Good morning, Doctor. Today we shall receive Lieutenant General Adams' son, or Lieutenant General Adams, son of the famous Isaac Adams. So this is the son of Isaac Adams. We strongly encourage you to pay him the attention he deserves to make your work easier. Lieutenant General has already undergone a medical examination. Results can be found in his card. So he should already have the information on the medical thing unlocked, huh? Okay. Will we do that, though? Eh, you know, we'll see. We have three bets. We have six requests. Here's the guy, Connor Adams. Son of the famous General Isaac Adams, who secured several key victories in the Independence War. Received many accolades, including the Medal for the Liberation of Nadal, for immense contribution to remote army command. Which means that, uh, you know, he wasn't really there. He was just giving orders from a safe bunker somewhere. He's had a leg injury. Fell off the horse during training. Ligament sprain. You gotta be kidding me. You gotta be kidding me. Condition stable. Inpatient care unnecessary. Second degree obesity. Diabetes. Comfy life. Comfy life. Michael- it, This guy's back! It's the- it's the- it's the guy with the- with the cows. I like how they have recurring things too. Okay, we, I'll get to this guy soon. By the way, keep a lookout for his scar. And you point out to me, Falcon, you missed a man with a scar in case I do it. Michael Burkett. At the start of the war, he dropped out of his third year at I Isla Bridge Medical Academy to go to war. Was assigned to the 88th Brigade as a field medic. So he's a fellow field medic guy, huh? Shows symptoms of a mild case of intestinal infection. Acts anxious, says that he is infected by a rabies virus, even though he has no animal bite marks and has no other contact with animals. So he might have that infection and virus that we keep seeing right now. Head injury, possible concussion from his words, he tried to milk a goat, but it turned out to be a male goat. He tried to milk a goat, but it turned out to be a male goat. This is Georgie. I'm sorry, Georgie, you're not gonna get treatment. <laughs> you're not gonna get treatment, dog. Jamie Brooke, 25. Ace pilot has many accolades. Subordinates consider him to be overly strict, but the higher of value is discipline and can, and can do attitude highly. Gunshot wound during a combat mission. Got hit by anti-air fire? Is that what that is? After receiving the injury, he returned to the base and landed the plane safely. Didn't take part in combat, only in bridge building and clearing debris after bombardment. Broken ribs and arms was inspecting a building when it collapsed. Spent five hours under the debris. Alright, look, let me, let me get this because I want to know about this virus. Moderately grave condition, clinical blood analysis shows infection by the rabies virus, immediate treatment needed. I definitely want to get him. Now. No, John, we're not going to treat you. This guy is the one that the government wants you to treat. I want to get some dossier on Corpus delecti, non-payment of alimony. Prescribed punishment, fine of 50 to 100 minimum incomes. Note, case suspended due to the defendant undergoing military service. Let's see how serious Jamie Brooke is. I mean, he got shot, he somehow still managed to land the plane. Heavy condition, profuse bleeding, right leg injured with fragments of the plane's hull. Thigh nerve damage, emergency surgery required. Alright buddy, I'm gonna hook you up too. I mean, he's a baller. He still landed that plane. Now we got the third bed here. We still got three more reports, so hold up. Let me get some background information so I feel guilty about who I don't give this bed to. Witness in an abuse of rank case. Defendant Hugh Gasket, captain of the 5th Engineering Brigade. Accusation. So he was only a witness, mind you. On the 23rd of December, Captain Hugh Gasket involved Privates Folly, Jackson, Lewis, Abrams, and Lieutenant Corporal Python and clear out debris in a building in River Church with the goal of extracting valuables despite the risk of the house collapsing. As a result, Private Jackson and Lieutenant Corporal suffered bone fractures. Private Adams died from the wounds. During the tribunal hearings, the witness refused his own testimony. Yeah, and this feels like, um, whoever he probably reneged on the statement against was like trying to cut, you know, loose ends, you know what I'm saying? Alright, boys. Let's go ahead and piss off the government some more. They ain't gonna like this one, but, um, so be it. We got two cards. For Michael Burkett, treatment prescribed to the patient shows signs of improvement. Oh, this dude, the virus guy. Doctor, glad to be in your hospital again. I have a favor of ask, uh, to ask of you. Please send a message to the HQ immediately. Tell them to find Yvonne... Get over here. Yvonne Dunn in the 80th Brigade and give her a rabies shot. I learned that you've also encountered a rapid temperature. Yeah, I have. Oh, this is cool. 
I've learned that you've also encountered a rapid temperature increase syndrome in your hospital. I love to see the cards of these patients and show you, show and how you treated them. Well, I mean, they've all died on me. And we did send the documents too. Yo, this is cool. All right, so I told you there was something fishy about those um viruses. So this might be leading somewhere. I'm glad that, you know, somebody had to die for it. But hey, that's intriguing how this goes. Jamie Brooke. Leg still hurts. Doctor, please, I beg of you, increase the painkiller dosage. How dare you refuse me? Who do you think you are? The only reason you weren't immediately fired is because we don't have that many doctors. However, a staffing reduction order for your hospital has already been sent to the HQ, and I will personally ensure that it gets approved. Yeah, I figured that was going to happen. I'm usually very evil in these games, sure, but I'm trying to be good for once. To some degree. From the Republic newspaper, this Wednesday, Colonel Jeremy Lewis, veteran of the Independence War and also a good friend of the Paws and Tails Animal Shelter, left this world. The Colonel, or Jeremy, as they ask everyone to call him, came there three times a week to feed the dogs and sometimes took them for a walk. The animal friends loved him very much. The shelter expresses their sincere condolences to his family. So apparently he's a good guy. I'm glad that I, did, I, I refused him so he could leave is what I think I did, right? I refused him so he could get sent out, as opposed to keeping him there in the war. So... Case closed on this one, maybe? Sure. Now, mind you, in case you're wondering, I'm now in the present time going over the case files of Dr. Taylor. From the Criminal Chronicle column of the Lemberg Newsletter issue, 1942. A common quarrel at the 47 Independence Street ended with two deaths. Witnesses and investigators of the crime scene describe a typical picture. Mr. R, an alcoholic, threw a jealousy-induced tantrum toward his wife, Mrs. A. A, f a fight broke out in which Mrs. A received three knife wounds and died on the spot. Mr. R, after resisting the arriving police detachment, died of a gunshot wound on the way to the hospital. So we saved this dude. He went back home. Probably to some sort of PTSD, hopefully that was in it, although he had that history of violence too, right? Went back home, apparently stabbed his wife to death, and then he got blighted by the cops. From the introduction to the book, The Truth About Connor Adams, written by Isaac Underwood in 2003, the government wants us to believe that the splendid equestrian, participant in the liberation of Ndal, holder of many accolades and medals, died after falling off a horse during, during training in 1940, two months before the war ended. Honestly, I find their gall fascinating. They would falsify the testimony of his comrades in arms in so dirty a way, but there are many questions that can't, they can't answer. For instance, why did one Dr. Taylor refuse to treat the Lieutenant General in 1938 under similar circumstances? Maybe because this never really happened. Maybe Dr. Taylor never really existed. In the next three chap- well, I guess in the next three chapters, not nest. In the next three chapters, I will prove that Connor Adams was part of a secret group known as the Society of the Seal. And will also show how their activities were related to the Order of St. Constantine. By publishing this book, I demand the Ministry of Defense to declassify information relating to the life and death of Connor Adams and all those who fade was hidden from the public. Yo! Okay. I feel ya. From Yvonne Burkett's acceptance speech for the Worldwide Medical Achievement in 1998. So this is the one, this is the lady that he told us to get a rabies shot to. This is considerably way after the entire event. Receiving a medical achievement, apparently. Michael got interested in, their, in this virus during the war. Then he started to collect the medical histories and screening results of those field patients who displayed strange symptoms and most importantly died a sudden death due to the sharp increase in body temperature. I got used to assisting him since our time at the academy, so I was glad to come back to it later and continue my studies. There we discovered the virus, which we quite immodestly named after us the Burkitt Dunn virus. So we saved him, we gave him the reports of the people that we decided to treat even though they died, and they were able to find a cure for this virus. Yo, this is cool. I love how this all interconnects with each other at the end. So to bring us over to winter here, so I think we've gone long enough here with this one. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Um, at this point, I'm gonna stop. But if you would, oh. But if you guys would like to see more at this point going forward, do let me know. And if there's enough interest, we'll definitely come back and do some more. Really fun thus far. I really like everything about it, how it's all linking up. And now that we have the secret seal thing happening as well, it could be more intriguing. But again, I'll leave it up to you guys to decide if you want to see some more. Otherwise, all the information will be down below. In case we don't do more, you can definitely pick it up for yourself, support the developers. I will catch you next time.